I'm Darren Osborne for the Biography Channel. Dr. Robert Atkins revolutionized the way we think about food. With the Atkins diet, counting carbohydrates became an everyday practice for people following his low-carb, high-fat, high-protein plan. And while it proved effective for some, Atkins faced a lifetime of adversity from a medical establishment that scoffed at his radical ideas. And it didn't help his cause when word leaked out that he was grossly overweight when he died, something that was later retracted. Dr. Robert Atkins is next. Bob was a pioneer who took all the abuse for a lot of years. I am concerned about Dr. the American Bethea. Heart Association's recommendations of Fruit Loops and Pop-Tarts having their seal of approval. His name gives many of us chills. A lot of people saw him as a quack. Well, I don't know where fruit got such a great reputation, frankly. He had this burning desire to change the way the world eats, but particularly America eats. Now on Biography, Dr. Robert Atkins. We are a supersized country obsessed with dieting. We scrutinize the diets celebrities swear by. Will Renee Zellweger's post-Bridget Jones diet work for us? Or perhaps Oprah's regimen holds the key to our success? The list of diets is endless. Atkins, South Beach, um, Scarsdale, cabbage soup, pineapple, the Paracone Promise, um, the Pritikin diet. I shouldn't keep going, should I? <laughs> and we embark on eating plans that to an alien eye might seem a bit, well, kooky. The grapefruit diet, the cabbage diet, even the blood type diet. A friend of mine, he actually won just ate like chicken and, and drank water. That's all he did. I don't know why. She ate tuna fish for breakfast, lunch, dinner until one day she dreamed she was a tuna fish and she quit. We spend $30 billion a year on diet products, ranging from pills to bars to shakes. I've tried low-carb bread, not for diet purposes, just to try it. It was awful. Yeah, I think I ate some diet cookies one time. Well, it was just like no taste, just nothing. Oh, and the power bars. Oh, God, power bars is like chewing us some bark. But there is only one diet that has managed to become a part of our language, a catchphrase for all low-carb plans, the Atkins diet. And everyone has an opinion about it. Uh, it sounds a bit mad to me. I tried it, and I lost 13 pounds in my first three weeks. I know people have lost weight on that, but I don't believe in it. Here is a diet that goes against all conventional nutrition advice, banning bread, potatoes, and pasta in favor of red meat, eggs, and bacon. What's not to love? In a world where it seems every month brings a new diet fad, the Atkins plan has been one of the most controversial since it was first introduced in 1972. No surprise, many doctors have big problems with both Atkins and his diet. He was abused, he was vilified. He was like a lightning rod. Everything was heaped on him. His name, I think, gives many of us chills. I mean, like, oh, Atkins. We don't respect him as a scientist. We, in fact, um, kind of bothers us that he would put out this type of diet without any research. This is why I sort of resent the idea that people are saying that my diet is not heart healthy. If it were not heart healthy, we wouldn't be reversing heart disease and getting these people who were having chest pain on a little bit of exertion out there running and jogging a few months later. I've seen uh, a few subjects in science uh, be treated like uh, this one is, and, and that it's really treated like religion and politics. People have extreme views on both sides. Then in 2003, a bomb dropped on the nutrition world. Several short-term studies suggested that the Atkins diet might not be so bad after all. I, like a lot of people, were surprised by the findings. Here, again, how could a diet that's high in saturated fat actually improve your cholesterol? But skeptics said, not so fast. We don't know if people stay on an Atkins-type diet for a long term, what's going to happen to their lipid profile, what's going to happen to their bones, what's going to happen in terms of cancer. We don't know that. No one knows that. That's never been done. Just explain to me how a diet virtually eliminating fruit is going to be good for you and safe. Well, I don't know where fruit got such a great reputation, frankly. Vegetables, yes. Uh, but people must not link fruits and vegetables in the same category. Vegetables are far more healthy than fruit. 
Still, despite all the criticism, it seems that most of us have done Atkins at one time or another. Two carbs. But who exactly is the doctor who started this controversial diet? Well, Dr. Robert Atkins was at heart a guy who loved food. My love of food. I made that diet taste so good, so delicious, uh, because I, I'm still, I still love food. Atkins the man and Atkins the doctor were almost inseparable. He channeled all his energies into his work, seeing patients and spreading the word about his unorthodox diet. Well, that, you definitely need to stay on a low carbohydrate diet just to handle your triglycerides. At times, he was so focused he could come off as rude. No, read, read, read the part of the book where it tells you what to eat. When I first met him, I was a little intimidated, but when you get past that first impression underneath that bully type <laughs> personality was this teddy bear that had a true passion for helping people. In fact, he created the diet for himself when as a young cardiologist, he noticed one too many chins in the mirror. And I had not seen him for a half a year at least. He must have put on 40 pounds, 30 pounds, I don't know what. And I see him coming toward me at the airport, and I start screaming. So Atkins went in search of a diet that a man with an appetite could live with. He found one in a medical journal. Just before I went on the diet, there was a nice article about a low-carbohydrate diet that allowed you to eat as much as you want. Another article describing the similarity between carbohydrate restriction and fasting, meaning that if, if you restrict carbohydrates, you're not hungry. And uh, that was for me because I... I was too hungry to follow a low-calorie diet. Now, Dr. Atkins threw out the bread and donuts and stocked his refrigerator with shrimp. And what he called a shrimp diet. He was eating shrimp all day. And he came home 26 pounds lighter. The fact that he did struggle with, with problems with his weight was really good because he understood what the patients were going through. And it worked for me, and then I tried it on 65 people at 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 and T in my first study group. All 65 got to their goal. I knew I had something that was very real and that should be mainstream. The low carbohydrate approach to dieting had been kicking around the medical world for over 100 years, but it took Atkins to make it a hit. He began putting more patients on a low carb regimen. And when the high fashion magazine Vogue published an article about it, socialites began beating a well-heeled path to his door. He was, of course, the diet doctor to the chic and well-known at that time. And everybody was flocking to his offices. Because the word spread that he had this revolutionary new diet where you can eat and not be hungry and lose a lot of weight. One of the reasons that people were so fascinated by it was because it tells you to eat everything that your whole life you were told you couldn't eat on a diet. So you had uh, mayonnaise, bacon, unbelievable. Here's the basic plan Atkins came up with. For the first week or so, dieters severely limit carbohydrates to promote quick weight loss. Foods like meat, cheese, and salad greens are allowed. Then carbs are added back into the diet in small doses. A piece of fruit here, some broccoli there, until the critical carbohydrate level is reached. That is, the level at which you start gaining weight again. Oh yes, and this works. You have to be very diligent at really keeping the carbs off. And what I found is when I didn't have any carbs, I didn't have that much hunger. And, it, and I lost inches, I lost weight, I had more energy, but that was just me. I, I think it's more a personal thing. Of course, as with every diet, once a dieter strays from the plan, the pounds come back, often with interest. It was okay while you were eating the food, but once you were able to eat carbs again, you just go nuts. Great success and then failure. So I, I lost a lot of weight, but then I gained it back. 